Hi there. I thought I was going to do a little bit of an experiment um, this afternoon so I would turn on the camera and take you along with the ride. I have no idea what's going to happen because I have not played like this before but I had a lot of these leaves left over after doing two impressions with the distress sprays and I wanted to do some um, inking or dyeing or something on tracing paper so I had a different texture of paper. So I have just some Strathmore tracing paper. It just happened to be what I had on my shelf. I have my uh, leftover leaves and I have alcohol ink in various colors. I have a dropper bottle full of uh, just plain alcohol and I have a spray bottle. And I'm just going to see what happens. If nothing else, if I get nothing but brown pages, I'm okay with that because I already have an idea how I'm going to be able to use them. Uh, what I like about the alcohol inks is, uh, you know, it's more instant gratification <laughs> because I never learned how to wait very well. Patience is not a strong suit, so unfortunately I pass that trade on to both of my children. And I have not played much with alcohol inks before, so this is going to be possibly interesting, possibly really boring. I don't know. We're going to see what happens. I want to spray just some water. I just want stuff to spread. I don't know if it's even going to be possible to get any impressions because the alcohol ink does dry super fast, but you know, let's just give it a shot. And if nothing else, I will have some rainbow papers. Maybe I should have wet the tracing paper completely. Maybe I'll do that on the next one. And we'll just see what happens. I know if I put too much of just the regular alcohol on the tracing paper, it does have a tendency to um, eat through the paper, which is also a you know, kind of neat effect if you don't mind. Let's see. Tracing paper is going to curl. All right, how about a green? These are going to be a lot brighter than my other ones, which again, is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just different. I know a lot of people use Yupo paper, and I have been reading that tracing paper is a close second to Yupo paper in favorites uh, for people. So. I'm using a lot of water because I don't want super, super bright colors, but here is where basic color theory would come in handy. So I would, you know, I don't have the muscle memory yet on the color theory, but that's okay. It's all okay. It's all good. We can get things to spread a little bit more. I don't know. I might just do them with just single color. Well, no, that would be kind of boring. Okay, there we go. They're getting kind of that woodlandy brown that I want. I like that. All right, so I think pretty much it's what you see is what you get with the alcohol ink. I don't think it continues to do anything after the fact. Um, I'm not stopping to read you any of the colors off of here. It's because I just don't think that works. I think, you know, you use what you have and you buy a few at a time and you build up your stock and then you just play around with it and see what you like. Besides, then my video would be an hour long. And who wants to watch an hour long video of somebody just playing with colors that they don't even know if they're going to go together? I don't know. Yeah, this one so far, not impressive, but I've got some ideas for the next one. Um, if nothing else, I'm going to get some really neat strips of tracing paper that I can tear and do something else with. But let's see if we can make a little bit of mud first. Like I said, when I was doing the botanical stuff, I just, when all the colors mix together, I'm okay with that because mud is something that's pretty common out in nature. Okay, it's starting to look a little better, a little better to me. Never outgrow my need to make mud pies, I guess. All right, so what I'm going to do is just dribble this on my next piece. So it's a mix of all my colors and some water and some alcohol and... It's got no plants on it yet, because I forgot to do that one. Let's see what happens if we do this. The other one, the other leaves, when I put them down, I had them sopping wet and then put them on the tracing paper, but maybe this will be an interesting effect too. We'll see. Who knows? Eventually, I'm going to have to stop making papers and finish making books. 
I'm spending a lot of time making up supplies, which is always cool and a lot of fun, but eventually you got to get back to work and uh, build whatever it is that you said you were going to build, right? All right, let's see. Let's just do some more browns around here. I think it's actually called rust. I like this color. All right, we're going to spread it a little because what I don't want is too many of those big um, circles, you know, where you do the droppers. I love droppers for convenience. I seem to be a little bit more coordinated with droppers than I am with sprays, but I don't want the circles that are left all the time. So right now outside the studio on my racks is another set of the plant impressions drying because I just couldn't leave it alone. I had to try again. I just, I'm addicted to making those darn papers. Let's see. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have added the green, huh? Oh, well. Here we go. And... I do wish the papers would lay down, but it is the nature of the beast, right? Okay, the other one kind of looks like a unicorn exploded in the forest, so... Uh, yeah, dear Susan, use fewer colors. Three is a good number. Two might be just fine. So the reason I dropped out of art in high school was not about color, because I don't think we even got that far. It was about perspective. And the teacher that I had in the seventh grade, whose name I thankfully forgot, told me I had no idea about perspective and just to give it up and transfer and go do something like home economics, which is what I did. And you know what? I was even worse in home economics than I was in art. But whoever that guy is, he is banished to the past, and I'm not going to listen to him anymore. Okay, I've got a little bit of drippage that I'm putting on the next tray that I already had prepared. So I'll do two more trays, and then I will turn the camera off, because like I said, who wants to sit and watch this over and over again, especially since we have no idea if this is going to come out. Um, I'm glad I'm getting braver at experimenting, though, and even happier that I'm getting braver about sharing the experiments, because that's not always something easy to do. You know, we always want to share the good stuff. We want to share um, how beautiful something came out, and we don't want to share, you know, how I did this and it totally stunk, and nothing works and you know we, we don't want to show that kind of stuff because people you know we think they want to watch the video so they can learn how to do something new but I think it's just as important to learn that other people fail too uh, there's probably gazillions of videos that we never see because people took a look at them and said oh no you know I look embarrassing there or I sound embarrassing I know my last video on my dried flowers um, I called a couple flowers by the wrong names and I'm sure my native plant people, if they were to ever watch the video, would go, oh, God, what is she doing, you know? She's giving everything a bad name. And I'm sorry, you know, I'm human. I make mistakes. That's just the way it rolls. And if you let the idea of making a mistake stop you from doing something that you're really feeling called to do or just play, um, life is too short. You don't know what's around the corner. And why not do the things that bring you joy now? And don't worry, uh, you can't control what other people think about you. The only thing you can do is control your reaction to what people think about you. So let it go, all right? But this time I'm going to wet the tracing paper completely before I put any of the alcohol ink on it and see if that makes a difference. I think it should spread perhaps a little better. Um, we'll see, or at least it's mostly completely. <laughs> It's kind of sort of wet. No, it's wet. It's wet. There's There are puddles of water, and it's getting all wrinkled, so I know that means that it's wet. And oh, let's, let's see. Experiment number, what, 553? Who knows? All right, purple. Purple. We got some purple. Okay, and we have another shade of... Well, it's kind of red. Uh, let's do this one. And butter 
butterscotch. Okay, I lied. I am telling you what some of the names are. Not all of them, though. All right, and then let's, let's just swish it around and see if we can get a lot of... Yeah, there's so much water, it's really breaking up the pigment in the alcohol ink. But, you know, it's, it's okay. It's going to give it more of that grunge effect, which is really what I'm going for here. And I can always come back in and do more things. Um, also, don't know whether the alcohol ink will sort... I, I'm hoping it will soak through to the other side, so I'll have some color on both sides. It's so one of the things I don't like is having to redo a color on another side. I just, like I said, no good at delayed gratification, which means that these sheets are going to go out in the sun now that the fog is burned off and dry, and they should be dry in a couple hours. Okay, so I'm back with my dried tracing paper, and, and I really didn't have very high hopes, which is a good thing because otherwise I would be super, super disappointed. I am going to show you these even though they are not pretty papers. They aren't papers that make me go, oh wow, I can't wait to use them. But I think it's really important to, number one, to experiment, and number two, to show people that not everything comes out right the first or second or third or hundredth time that we try to do it. And it's just all part of the process. So, I did get an impression. The thing is that uh, the alcohol inks, it's really hard to get a, a good coverage on them, so the splotchiness doesn't really appeal to me. However, I might, you know, cut this in half and then use this in a smaller journal like this, and of course the paper will be flattened out, so it might not be too bad. This one, there are a few um, impressions, and this one actually looks kind of usable. I can see some impressions of some leaves here, too, and the color is diluted enough that I think it, it you can't see the blotchiness as much. This one I like. Um, this was when I got smarter about not putting on quite so many colors. Let's see. There is a little bit of an impression here and here, but um, it may be a problem that things dry too fast with the alcohol inks, but I think the Distress sprays are just going to be the right way to go. This one, I love the color combinations, but I'm not crazy about so much blotchiness. But again, this is on a big piece of paper, a couple of impressions of leaves. But I think if I fold it and I fold it again and I'm making maybe a pocket or an envelope out of it, then it becomes not quite so overwhelming with all the just the circles. So, you know, still usable, just not like my other um, leaf impressions that I did with regular copy paper and distress sprays. Again, this one, you know, you can just see a few of the outlines blotchy colors, but can make something out of it. This one is okay. So I got a little frustrated at first because that's always my initial reaction. Oh man, you had this great idea and oh man, you stink because it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. And you know, it was the same way when I was doing a lot of writing is, you know, you write a first draft, you write a second draft, you write a third draft, you send it off to your agent, your agent says you need to change this, you send it off to the publisher, they say, oh no, 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 you got to change this. And suddenly you're on draft like 27. It's the same kind of thing with art, is you just have to keep experimenting with it until you find just the right way into whatever the story you're trying to tell with the type of art that you're trying to do. So because I wanted to end on a positive note for me, because I know that really affects the kind of energy I carry forward into the next project, I went ahead and played some more with alcohol inks just to get some wonderful tonal things on the page. And I really really like the way this one came out. This was just lots of drops of alcohol ink and then drops of alcohol and then just kind of moving the paper back and forth. But, I mean that'll be a great page in one of the nature journals. You can hear Zoe, our dog, going absolutely crazy in the background which she does whenever anybody walks by the property. But see that's going to be a great page. And this will be another one. This is just shades of green and brown and I really love the way this turned out. So this seems to be a better use for me with alcohol inks right now at what I know about how to manipulate them, which is not very much. And then just because it's fun, I did this, which will not land in a botanical journal, but it'll be really lots of fun to do doodles on. Yep, there you go. You got to see all my mistakes. I'm not thrilled with them, but I bet you anything I can figure out something to do with them. 
I learned a little bit more about the properties of alcohol inks and how they might work for me. I made a couple of other pages that I'm really happy with. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, I hope you will give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I look forward to seeing you next time around. Bye.